So the Boreal Forest um, Cow by Renee Callahan, I believe. Um, it's the second pattern of Knit Vent 2016. Came out this morning and it's adorable. I really would like to knit it. But I don't keep a um, large stash of worsted weight um, wool yarn. But what I do have in my stash at any given time is some worsted weight bare wool of the Andes uh, from Knit Picks. So it's a three color um, Fair Isle cowl and I'm going to dye up two skeins of my bare Knit Picks and I'm going to use one skein natural. And I thought I would show you that process in this uh, inaugural episode of uh, Knitting to Die For. So to get started, I've got a pot of water on the stove warming up. Um, should be uh, proper and use a stainless steel pot, but uh, I've been using this one for over a year now and it seems to work just fine. Uh, it was the cheapest pot at Walmart. So for this quick dye job, um, what I'm going to use is two skeins of Wool of the Andes Superwash Bear, some um, Wilton's food coloring, and I'm going to use some citric acid because I don't have any vinegar at home, but vinegar works just as well. Um, and so I'm going to dye one skein with a combination of creamy peach and pink, and the other skein is going to be a combination of cornflower blue and teal. So I've, pot, I've got just enough water to cover my uh, skein of yarn in full, and I'm going to add uh, one teaspoon, five mils of citric acid to the water as it's warming up. And whisk that in. So what I'm aiming to do is a tonal, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of the uh, Wilton's pink. Uh, I'm just using a wooden chopstick here and add that into the water. That doorbell was the mailman, actually a mailwoman, and I'm pretty sure this is a Mrs. Brown's bag and I'm really certain that this is hedgehog fibers coming all the way from Stephen and Penelope. So uh, those will be on my Instagram. Anyways, back to the dyeing. So, I use my uh, handy dandy wooden chopstick to put a glob of the Wilton's pink into the pot. And I'm gonna use my whisk to make sure that it dissolves as completely as I can get it to. Um, I found that some of the Wilton's colors, probably can't hear me over this, I'm using my whisk to dissolve it as completely as I can. But you can see that some of the Wilton's colors um, like to stay behind in chunks in the water. So hopefully enough aggressive whisking will get this to come into solution. Pick skeins come pre-tied at two points. I've just gone ahead and added an extra two ties with some uh, blue acrylic yarn. And you'll notice that in uh, contrast to every dyeing tutorial, every dyeing set of rules um, you've probably ever seen, my yarn is not pre-soaked. And I like to live dangerously and this is going to go right into the pot dry. And I'm going to try and manage this with um, the camera in one hand and the whisk and the yarn in the other. Pot of hot water with pink food coloring and the citric acid and we're gonna go right ahead and put my dry yarn in and use the whisk to sink it down. So you are supposed to, in theory, pre-soak your yarn every time. And I've had really good results not bothering to pre-soak. So we'll show you how this is going to turn out. And one of the tools that I like best for um, stove top dyeing, or dyeing in general anytime that you're submersing in water, is I have a white ceramic uh, measuring cup with a handle. So I can go in and test to see how much of the dye has cleared out of the water. 
and since uh, pinks and reds strike fast, it looks like we're already fairly clear. Now I can go in with my chopstick and loop it through my acrylic yarn and pull out a skein, which is essentially been dyed pink and the water is cleared. Um, and then you can also see, because it went in dry, you can see that one side of the skein that went into the water first is much pinker than the other side of the skein because um, the pinks strike that fast. So putting the dry yarn into the dye pot um, really does make the pinks strike very quickly and you get some uh, variegation that way. Um, I do want to add a little bit more of the Wilton's pink food coloring. So I've just got a glob here on my chopstick and this time I'm going to go in to the pot that already has the yarn in it. And that's going to hopefully uh, strike and continue the sort of variegating or the tonal nature of this yarn. This chopstick's a little bit rough so it's catching my yarn. I don't like that. Um, just gotta break it up because it goes in and stays undissolved. There we go, it's in solution now. And that will go ahead and strike rather quickly. You can see that I've got pink in my water, so I'm going to give that some time with the heat to strike. Um, as far as temperature, I've got my stove set to like 8 or high, but I've got my pot on the tiny burner. And so I found that this pot on the small burner set to high or close to high won't actually come to a boil. Um, there's just too much surface area of the pot that's not in contact with the burner. Um, so it's my perfect dye pot right now. Um, let's see if it's cleared. Oh, it's still a bit pink. So we'll give that some more time. In the meantime, I'm getting my glaze ready. So this is the um, creamy peach, the Wilson's creamy peach. I just put a dollop into this glass jar. And I'm just gonna add some hot water to the jar, which appears to have had some pink food coloring in it from before. And we're gonna go ahead and shake that into solution. So back to our pot. Um, let's test. I'm pretty sure all that pink is going to have cleared out of the water by now. And you can see that the water is totally clear. Uh, pinks and reds die really fast. And I've got my jar of um, the creamy peach solution. And for interest sake, I'm going to go ahead and just pour this on. Poured about half in, and this is just going to help to make some of a variegated sort of glaze to this yarn. It's going to add dimension to the color. Move my yarn around, add a little bit more in over here, move my yarn around. Add a little bit more in over here. That's really, that's the rest of it. And then uh, let that sit. Let's check our yarn. Um, and test to see if the color has cleared from the water. And the color has absolutely cleared from the water. And then I've just grabbed the um, acrylic tie with my chopstick. And you can see we have a semi-solid um, kind of tonal, essentially pink skein of yarn. So this is just going to come over to the sink. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse it. Uh, because it's super wash, I'm not going to be super careful about letting it dry all the way to uh, room temperature and then rinsing in like-minded water temperature, like tempered water, can't talk. 
Um, I just sort of throw it in the sink and then let it cool off a little bit and then go ahead and rinse it off. Uh, use a little bit of Dawn soap uh, to wash it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do the blue now. So because my um, pink has pretty much essentially cleared out of my water, I'm going to go ahead and reuse the same dye water. It's already hot and why be wasteful if you don't have to. Um, I'm not going to add another full teaspoon of citric acid. I'm just going to add like maybe an eighth of a teaspoon in. Um, you don't actually exhaust the acid from the water. Um, so you can go ahead and reuse the same water with the same acid. If you start to find that the colors aren't setting, you can always add in a little bit more after the fact. Um, so I have my second skein tied up and ready to go. And this time I'm going to go in with the teal first and then overlay some cornflower blue. So I've stirred in my teal Wilton's food coloring just to give you a better idea of how much the water is going to clear. This is the before. Um, amount of dye that I have in my water. Uh, I find that blues sometimes don't clear all quite all the way, but in the past I've done the food coloring blues with uh, vinegar, and we'll see if the citric acid uh, makes a difference to help them clear a little bit better. And again, I've got a hot pot of water on the stove, citric acid is in, uh, food coloring dye is in, dry wool is going in on top, and you'll see it starting to strike right away and just use my whisk to push it down and fully submerge it. And I'm not stirring so much as I am just sort of pushing the yarn around in the pot. You wouldn't want to stir. It's just going to make a huge tangled mess. And already you can see quite a lot of that color has cleared. Um, and struck to the yarn. But we're going to give it a couple of minutes um, and test it again to see if we can't get full clearance before we go in with the glaze. So it's been about another five minutes and my color has almost completely cleared from the water. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, glazing, if you will, with the cornflower blue. So I'm going to just push my yarn to the side a little bit and pour in. I've just mixed up a little bit of the cornflower blue in some hot water, pour it in right there, and move the yarn into it. Pardon the steam, push my yarn to the other side of the pot, pour into the empty spot, and then move the yarn into it. I'm going to do this corner. And push the yarn into it. And then I'll go into the other side of the pot. So empty spot in the water. Pour some dye in. And push the yarn into it. And go ahead and let that set. And it's only been about five minutes and you can see that my color has cleared from the water and uh, has set onto the yarn. So I will go ahead and grab my tie and you can see that again we have a essentially tonal teal uh, with some darker areas and lighter areas. So this one will go to the sink and get rinsed and washed and then uh, they're gonna dry. It'll probably take them about 24 hours uh, to dry hanging up in my basement. Uh, it's winter here so I can't dry them outside and then I will show you the final dried uh, skeins of yarn tomorrow. And here's the finished skeins ready to be wound up and cast on. So we have the um, teal and cornflower blue, and you can really see some of the darker um, variegations over the lighter color. Of course, the undyed yarn and the pink with creamy peach. Overall, I'd say it was a success.